Hello, good morning. It is Sunday, August 11th, 811 a 811 at 811. Cool. It is day three of LeakyCon, and today is another Tom time. I have his autograph today. I'm really excited. It's gonna be really emotional because I have a like things to Tom. I'm gonna be giving him a letter, so I'm really excited. I might also try to get Scarlett Burns autograph today. Not sure. Who knows, but Tom's panel is also today. So yeah, it's gonna be great. There's gonna be a lot of Tom time. So let's go inside and get in line for Tom. Welcome LeakyCon day three. How are we doing? <laughs> well, we're so pleased you joined us and we're so pleased to welcome this guest. I know you know him as Draco Malfoy, but let me tell you a little bit about what Tom has been up to in these last years. Tom has been in the movies Rise of the Planet of the Apes, Woo! Risen, Woo! A United Kingdom, In Secret, Against the Sun. He also directed the documentary series Tom Felton Meets the Superfans about the experience of being in the famous property of Harry Potter. Most recently, he portrayed Julian Ashford on The Flash Woo! and starred as Logan Main in the YouTube original series Origin. Woo! He's also been pursuing his music career, as I'm sure you all got to see yesterday. How great was that? Woo! So, no, no more waiting. Please welcome Tom Felton. Woo! Woo! Good morning, Dubs. Yes, they are, isn't it? I've never done a panel this early, so if I balls it up, don't, 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 don't. Say that again? What does that mean? I've, I've never done a panel this early, so if I balls it up, oh, don't balls. Don't mean. I thought you said something else. I'll explain it. I'll explain it to you later. Moving on. Moving on. So how are you doing? How's LeakyCon going? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. It's my first time here at LeakyCon. You guys have been very, very welcoming, so thank you very much. <laughs> We had a nice, nice stroll around uh, Dallas last night. Deep Ellum, is that right? Woo! Yeah. My buddy took some scooters. <laughs> we killed ourselves on those. Um, it was great. So we had a good time. So yeah, I'm, uh, I'm very, very, uh, very, very impressed with the city and the people here. It's just been lovely. So thank you. Crikey, this is exactly the sort of thing at this time of the morning I'm going to do. I don't tell often. Um, well, I don't, there's a story with, with, uh, with me and a uh, Alan Rickman. Uh, I think I've told it a few times, but it's, uh, it's quite amusing. Um, there's a scene at the end of Half-Blood Prince where we're all, after, after we kill Dumbledore, or he does rather, we're all leaving the, uh, the Great Hall. And we're doing this in this sort of like V formation. Uh, Snape right at the front and then uh, the rest of us followed behind and the director was really keen for me to be close as possible to Alan. Now Alan insisted on having this long cloak <laughs> draped along the floor. You can see where this is going. Uh, and after every take the director would be like just get closer, get closer. And Alan turned around I think before the first take and said don't step on my effing cloak. <laughs> We actually all laughed, we thought we were joking, he was joking, but he was, lo and behold, <laughs> lo and behold, first take, I'm just marching behind him like this, I try not to look down, of course I've just got boop, and it's attached to his neck. Oh my gosh. So he just got, uh, ripped him down to the floor. I've never seen a more stern look on someone's face in my life. <laughs> Luckily, the Death Eater did it on the next take, so it kind of, uh, kind of got me out of trouble a little bit. But yeah, I'll never forget nearly killing that one. Rick, when that was like a killing discussion up here. Um, so, when, what was the first thing you did when Harry Potter was over? When you left that bubble, how did you sort of reacclimate to the world, as it were? I don't know. I don't think I have really yet. I think. <laughs> Here I am, still talking about it. Uh, I think, I think we all expected that there was going to be like a hard ending, a big, big final, um, you know, stop. But it never happened because you know the, the films came out 
a year later, and then, and then definitely Hellas Part 2, another year later than that. And uh, the theme parks opened, and then the, uh, uh, the play was written. Um, so it's something that I'm really proud of, actually, that, that the Harry Potter flame is not doused at all, really. It seems that the fans are still, uh, still enjoying it, and I get fans now come up to me that weren't even born when we were making the first film, so it's kind of, <laughs> it kind of it's a funny feeling. Uh, yeah, so it's one of those things that I guess get to, you know, every time I feel nostalgic or whatever, I can go back to the leaves and where we shot the films and do the studio tour or go to Hogsmeade in Orlando or, uh, yeah, so it's, it's something that I think is always going to be part of my life and I'm very proud of it. Woo! Woo! Cheers, mates! <laughs> When fans come up to you now, are they saying anything? Are they saying anything different than they were in the, the beginning? Like, are they quoting different things to you than they were? Not really. really? <laughs> all the like scared Potter. Scared Potter. <laughs> My father will hear about this. <laughs> uh, get the rest. I'm sure there'll be requests later. Uh, um, yeah, maybe. Maybe when we were first doing it, I got a bit more of a negative uh, response from fans. I never forget someone came up to me. I was only 11, I think. Uh, <laughs> He <laughs> said, why are you such a dick to Harry? <laughs> I, don't, I don't, I don't write it. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, and people were complaining, uh, can't you just be a bit nicer to him? I was like, look mate, it's out of my control. <laughs> Jesus, these sorts of things. But nowadays I think it's more, uh, it's more positive feedback, I think. Yeah. Have you seen, you saw Chris Child, right? I did, yeah. I saw it. Grown up Draco. Yeah, I know. I was. It's really cool actually because I didn't read much about it. I didn't know much about it. And then uh, a friend that I went to go see it, and I was like, "Bloody hell, there he is! He's Draco lives on." Uh, and the mouth always was such an integral part of the story that it was. Uh, that was really cool. I have a small fantasy that maybe in, in years to come, as I get older, I'll be able to play Draco on the stage to uh, rekindle. <laughs> Some days it rains Some days it pours I know I'm not much girl But I guarantee you I'm yours You can be my 44 now Only you I'm thinking with my heart and soul and not my... I know it's difficult to have just to watch you sleep A leap of faith is needed, I'm about to lead soldiers I'm thinking for the pop of gold She gets me excited like the thought of Christmas to a five-year-old These eyes I've never seen something so beautiful I'm living by seaside Where the rain hardly falls I've only seen her three times but every time my heart dances some more, it positively seems right To have your fingertips rest in mine These hands have never touched the surface of NASA skin I'm sinking into bean bags Filled with cigarettes, whiskey and gin You know I've never seen that But I assure you my eyes have seen plenty I never dreamed that I hope enough for hope now just like that
Champagne, we drank it. Fifteenth in class, and we were. Now who would have thunk it? The bears and dolphins would get on super like a drum kit. My heart's beating like I'm 15 years young now to blow the trumpet. <laughs> It is the end of LeakyCon Day 3, which means it is the end of LeakyCon Dallas 2019. And I was doing all sorts of fun, and as soon as I get in my car, I feel all the emotions, and I'm going to cry. <sighs> it's hard to describe how much things like this mean to me, but also just meeting Tom which I never thought would happen. If you know my story, you know, but Tom was a big part of who I am, why I'm okay. Like he and his music came to me at the perfect time in my life where I just remember that, like that whole year, my 13th year was so dark and he's the only bright spot. I remember him, his music, and I mean Twilight, but <laughs> just it's just so meaningful and now 10 years later exactly I get to meet him I get to hear him sing I get to, like it's just crazy so okay let's just try to get ourselves together okay now let's talk about our day and see what happened I don't even remember it was such a blur okay so yeah first thing this morning I get there wait in line first thing is the Tom Felton spotlight panel so I got to see Tom again on the spotlight panel and at the end of the panel he sang some more songs so it was just a treat like I am obsessed okay um, and then after his panel I went to I bought tickets randomly to go meet Scarlett Byrne who is Pansy Parkinson and she was also in the Vampire Diaries so here we go let me take all this stuff out so I had her sign Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone so she signed down here and said dear Keely best wishes heart um, and she signed it Pansy but she also signed it Scarlett so that was really great um, and let's see on my handy dandy phone what happened next oh <laughs> girl next no big deal I met Tom Felton um, and this was like just really 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 special I mean obviously I met him yesterday but today I did the autograph so if you know ten years ago July was the anniversary ten years ago he tweeted me the tweet reads I said, I am such a big fan. I would die if you replied to me. And he tweeted me and said, does posting this tweet make me a murderer? Oh, my 13 year old self was screaming. And this was one of those bright spots of that year that I was talking about. And I celebrate it every year because it helped me so much. So I printed out the tweet and I had him sign it. And he just said, love Tom Felton with a heart. I can still smell the Sharpie. Oh my gosh. Okay, you know what? Sometimes I'm weird, it's fine. But I got to talk to him and thank him and I told him how he saved me and how his music saved me and I reminded him of a song from 2009 that he wrote and he was like, uh, I have to relearn how to play that one. Um, and I got to give him a letter. It was an art print of Hogwarts Castle with my letter on the back of it. So that was really special. I really hope he reads it like just so he knows how much he means to me and I'm sure to a lot of other people and what he has done has like saved me basically I also got to talk to his friend not sure if he's like the handler agent manager or whatever he sang with him on stage a little bit yesterday I got to talk to him and tell him I really liked his music too um and we had a great time talking he was great awesome love that I didn't even tell you what Scarlett and I talked about she's the nicest um so recently I went to where they filmed the Vampire Diaries so we got to talk about that and like different spots on set which was fun okay and then after that I went on a panel which was talking about the paintings and portraits um, in the Harry Potter world so um, 
there was this girl, I'm sorry, I can't remember her name, but she was lovely. Um, but Melissa and Nelly was also on there, and Mike from Potterless was on there. So that was a great time, great fun. After that, I got to meet Mike from Potterless. Um, so that was lots of fun as well. And finally, the last panel I went to was another one with Melissa and Mike from Potterless. And it was a podcast live type of thing. They combined their podcasts together because they both have podcasts. So it was just really wonderful. Um, I want to talk about the things that I got today because I got a few things. The first thing is the LeakyCon shirt. Love it. I love this design so much and it's perfect because it's Slytherin colors and like this was Tom's ear. Um, and then my friend, she had like things that she was supposed to trade all weekend but she didn't get rid of it all so like I picked up some stuff. I got this print of Dumbledore. I got this print that says it is our choices that show what we really are far more than our abilities. Love that. And these are like good quality. And then if you have been following my pictures of Tiny Tom, I got Medium Tom. Oh my goodness. So I love this. I cherish this. And honestly, going into this weekend, Draco was not one of my like favorites. Um... Like, I didn't hate him, but he just wasn't one of my favorites. And now I'm like, Draco is the only character that matters. But anyway, it was wonderful, magical. I really hope I can go next year. It's in Orlando. But um, it's 6.41 p.m. and I have a four-hour drive back. So let's get the show on the road. And thank you so much for watching these vlogs. And let me know if you were at LeakyCon, what your favorite panel was, what your favorite moment was. I would love to know. Also... Girl, okay, so today someone came out to me and was like, Keely, and I was like, that's me, and they were like, I love your YouTube channel, so like, I didn't even get your name, we talked for so long, I didn't even get your name, but if you're watching this, like, comment, let me know, message me, because that seriously made my entire weekend, honestly, like, I was so emotional after that, just overwhelmed, I've never been recognized because of my YouTube, like, I've never been told that, so like, that was so wonderful. But anyway, thank you so much for watching these vlogs. Um, yeah, I will see you next time. Stay magical.